Praise the Lord, Pastor James T. Elam Jr. here at Dudamus Christian Center. I'm so honored and I'm blessed today to have you tune in again to receive the Word of God. Listen, the word dunamis means miracle working power. It's a Greek word in the Bible for power. And I'm telling you, I was reading Hebrews 4.12. It says that the Word of God is quick and it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. So when we hear the word and receive the word, there is power in the word to change your situation. I'm telling you, I just believe something good is about to happen to you today because the word of God is coming into your home. God bless you and watch this. He wants us to be that way. That we don't have to love somebody with the same color of skin. We're not drunk enough, that's why we have racism. Because racism is taught. Racism is not birthed. Somebody has to teach somebody how to act. They got it from somewhere. Say amen to that. I don't know, this sandwich is going, I don't know what I, I, I none of this is in on no paper. <laughs> but it must be one that need to be said. Yeah. Now, we're releasing the power of dunamis while preaching. In other words, the gospel is released, the power is released when you understand the gospel of grace. If you understand what dispensation you are in, you can have all the power and do all those things and yet not release it because you don't know what dispensation you're under. Some of us think we're still under the law dispensation. But Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law. So you need to understand what mindset you need to have in this season to get things beyond your wildest imagination. God showed me without this, that's why it ain't happening. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you this. Look at Acts. I got a couple of minutes. Man, look at Acts. I want to hear some more about that wine, Pastor. Let's come back next week. <laughs> Don't do like me now. I was, I was coming home was late one time, coming from my dad's house, I think. I was coming back driving, and all of a sudden, you know, you a little tired, a little wobbling, right? I said, I'm, I'm going to sleep here. Then I saw, I seen the light come on, and the man pulled me over, right? I said, man, I went, Ooh. and then uh, he came up there, he said, sir, you been drinking? I said, no, sir, I'm a preacher. He said, and? <laughs> I, I thought I was saying something, but he let me know that everybody <laughs> I said, no, I don't drink. He said, I don't, you know, I, I, don't, uh, 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 I, don't, I don't trust you men of God. Get out. Walk the line. So I'm out here. Walking the line. I did that. Walked the line real good and stuff. I made it all right. He said, okay, now I need you to say your ABCs. I said, okay. I started saying my ABC. He said, Sam Bacchus. I said, turn me in. <laughs> I can barely say them forward. I know I can't say ABC back. Man start laughing and let me go. <laughs> All righty, that was my joke for today, but that was... I wasn't drinking, I was just sleeping. But what if I'd been drinking and then on 10 o'clock news, y'all saw the past? Mm-mm. Some of y'all still love me, but some of y'all be talking about... Mm -hmm. Did you hear? Did you see the past on? Lord. <laughs> but those that really love me, man, they be, y'all be, y'all be covering it up. You, that won't him. <laughs> That's when you really love somebody. But when you don't really love them, you want to talk about them a little bit. You know, come on. I'm almost finished. Praise God. 
For those of you who haven't laughed yet, your wood is wet. <laughs> Church is not a time to come, you'll never laugh. Somebody said, this, 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 this too, it's, it's too funny in here. No, no, no. It, it's all right. God, God, God laughs. God is good to, laughter is healing. There's medicine. That's what's wrong with some of y'all. You're sitting there like you're sucking a lemon, like you're like, like you sucking poison or something, like, you're like, like something wrong with you, like you're real spiritual. Mm. See, this, when I was coming up, the real spiritual one had, had this little, mm. That ain't doing nothing. It's all right to laugh. Have fun. You're saved on your way to heaven. Something good is about to happen to you. Y'all like to try when you're going through something and all hell is broke loose, I dare you to fall out laughing. And devil said, what you laughing at? You say, I'm laughing at you because all is well in my, don't let the devil see you sweat. Here it is. Glory to God. Do you see Acts 13, I mean 14? Here's Paul. Paul wrote Ephesians. Now he's telling us here, so very important. I love it here. Man. Verse 3. Long time therefore abode, they speaking boldly in the Lord, gave, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done. When the word of his grace is present, you're going to see the power to bring miracles all the time. Well, look what it says. But the multitude of the city was divided and part held with the Jews and part with the apostles. In other words, when every grace is mentioned, ever is preached, there's going to be some people that don't believe or don't understand. Some people will say, the real religious people will say, this is, you know, you know, greasy grace. You know, you know, all, you know, they seem like you're giving people a license to sin when you talk about grace. Now, you don't need no license, because I found out church folks will do what they want to do. Ain't nobody gave y'all a license, been sinning pretty good anyway. <laughs> Look at somebody say, I don't need no license, I know how to sin. <laughs> No, that's, that's because you don't understand. You don't understand what grace is. Grace is Jesus. And so Paul began to preach that. They didn't understand it. But somebody said, do you know what Paul preached? Yeah, I know what he preached. Look over here. Go back one. Praise God. And you and I'm almost finished, but look at Acts 13. Here, here's the actual sermon that he was going around preaching. Here's one. Here's Acts 10, um, 13 and 38. Look what it said. Be it known unto you, brethren. You men and brethren, through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which could not be justified by the law of Moses. He's showing us right here. I'm preaching this. The first thing I need you to understand that you, Jesus, are, you are forgiven. See, they didn't know that. In that day, they thought that you were forgiving like the old covenant. They thought you had to earn forgiveness. They thought you had to forgive first, and then God forgive you. Now he showed up and said, wait a minute. It has changed. The dispensation has changed. Jesus has given you forgiveness now when you believe on him. So this is how... And this is how y'all confused now? This, this is what I want to talk about. I have a couple of things to show you the dispensations that's changed. That's important to understand if you want the power to flow. You want to receive things, you have to go in with the right mindset. And I'm telling you right here, this is one thing that we need to understand. We want to know before the cross and after the cross. What happened before the cross? There are certain dispensations that happened before the cross, you know, pre-cross, that, that after the cross is not applicable to the day. Some things that you're reading in the Bible, just because it's in the Bible, which dispensation is it under? Uh, is it talking to the Jews? Is it talking to the Gentiles? Is it before the cross, after the cross? Because if you don't, you'll put all the Bible in one thing and just, and just um, 
you know, be confused. So I'm, I'm trying to tell, I don't want my people confused. Now I ain't worried about nobody else, but I don't need you confused. I need you to understand what the Bible is talking about and how now this grace will begin to help us if we understand it. So let, let's, let's deal with this. i probably just do one or two. Let's do with one. Let's do with forgiveness. Before the cross and forgiveness after the cross. This is something you need to understand because some people sitting here right now think you're not forgiven. You don't know what I said last year, past. You don't know what I did. Like, no, you need to read the Bible. Can you read? I need to show you something. Look, look what it says here. Let's say before the cross. Forgiveness before the cross. Look at Mark eleven twenty five. 25. Real quick. Mark eleven twenty five. 25. Lord have mercy. Jesus. Man. Mark what? Now, I know this must be the devil. My phone ain't never did this before. I'm still not up. Something is wrong. I'm going to keep on preaching, though. I'd like to look at my audience, though. I, ain't, I, don't know. I don't know if y'all like that or not. I hope y'all are. Amen. Yes, that's a sign. Come to church because I can't see you. <laughs> look at this. How many got it? Mark 11, 25. This is before the cross. It's in the New Testament, but it's not talking about, it's in the New Testament, but it's still Jesus operating as a prophet in the Old Covenant. He hadn't died yet. So sometimes he was talking to the Jews, and sometimes he was introduced with the law, and sometimes he was introducing grace for the future. But you need to understand which one it is. When he said right here, he was talking to the Jews under the law. Mm. Look what he said, Mark eleven twenty five, And when you stand praying, what he said, forgive if ye have ought, uh, if you, if you have ought against any, that your Father also in heaven may forgive you of your trespassing. But if you do not, if you, if you, see it's a condition, if you don't forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you of your trespasses. Now, I heard people say somebody was on their deathbed, but they, they went to hell because they didn't forgive. Wait a minute. What? That was old covenant. Yeah, we're supposed to forgive because unforgiveness is like drinking poison, waiting for another person to die. Unforgiveness affects you. Unforgiveness, yeah, but under the old covenant, they had to forgive first before God forgave them. But everybody was failing, so he sent Jesus to forgive us and set us on another covenant. Mm. So even though you might be holding something, you can still be saved. Now, I know, I know, I know, uh, uh, I know some of y'all glad I said it, but you're only affecting yourself when you hold unforgiveness. It can take you out of here. Stress, go to heaven fast. So that's not what I'm saying. I'm just giving, I'm just telling the truth. Don't, don't put, don't be lying, talking about that. He said, if you, that's all. New covenant ain't if you. When I believe on Jesus, I'm forgiven. Amen. Can I prove it by the Bible? Look over here, look over there. Let's go after the cross then. Glory to God. After the cross. Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4. 32. Somebody need to hear this because somebody sitting here, you know, you know, done got uh, uh, raped, and, you know, and, and you, you done got treated real bad and, and, and seem like you just can't let it go. Well, you need the Holy Ghost to help you let it go, but God still loves you. He's still in you, even though you ain't got that together yet. Who's telling somebody that? Mm. If so, if, I'm, if what I'm preaching is wrong, we need to shut the church down and just go just go live it up because <laughs> we all going to hell so i'm right and you're wrong whoever listened to me, and i'm gonna prove it to you right now look what it said ephesians 4 man ephesians 4 i love it here man look what it says here glory to god verse 31 let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice yeah, so he want us to get rid of those things. But look what it says. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Why? 
even as God for Christ's sake hath, hath forgiven you. In other words, when you believe on Jesus, forgiveness is a finished work. And so now he's forgiven you, not waiting on you to do something to get forgiveness. No, you're forgiven when you believe on Jesus. Amen. Somebody didn't go off too good for that because I, I can tell that religion is talking to you. You know, I grew up a certain way and Bishop Blue Blue told me something different, pal. And every time I'm, I knew that demon is moving like, I don't know if I would say that. Huh? Can you give me another scripture? Yeah, here it comes. Let me stop from my, I heard something. <laughs> 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 Look at Colossians 3.13. One more. Just one more. Look at Colossians 3.13. It's all over the Bible. Can you read Look what it says here in Colossians 3.13. Lord, forbind one another, forgiving one another. If any man have any quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. Because he forgave you, you go give. His forgiveness is already to you. So in other words, unforgiveness under the new covenant is dangerous. It affects you. It may take you out early. It may keep you in bondage. It, and you're offended. It will stop your blessings on the earth, but it can't keep you out of heaven. And so we're going to need to just turn all that out because, no, no. Mm -mm. In other words, God forgives you first so you can forgive others now. Man, this is good right here. Say amen to that. Amen. What about love under the old covenant? See, we got to understand this. If the power going to flow, we got to understand love. Look at this. Oh, to God. Mm-hmm. Look at this. Mark 12, 30. Look at that. Love. Let's find out love. Mark what? Mm-hmm. Somebody said, it, I was excited, didn't you? Yeah, we need, to, we need to learn something. We need to understand. Where else I go? Look what it says here. Here's Jesus. Look at verse 29. And Jesus answered, this is before the cross. Somebody said, before the cross. See, before the cross, I'm going to say this, I'm going to read this. Before the cross, is the is the old covenant uh, of the law agreement between Jewish people? Number two, it was a performance-based covenant based on what you do. In other words, it was a conditional covenant of self-effort. If you do good, you get good. If you didn't, you, you had to kill an animal. If you didn't kill that animal, that blood of that animal will, will cover your sins to the next year. So look here, Jesus was talking to, uh, uh, talking to them. He was talking to these people, and they were asking, look what it said. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord Jesus. Look what it says here. Lord Jesus answered and said, first of all, commandments. Look what it says. Hear, O Israel, our Lord one, is one God. Look what it says, verse 30. And thou shalt, here's his, his love. Here's your love now. Here's how you're supposed to love God. If thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. And, with, and this is the first commandment. The second is like unto this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is no other great, commandments greater than this. And so we took that under the old covenant that he was talking to the Jews. And then we going around talking about I love God with all my heart. I love God with all my soul. You lying? I start thinking, do I love God with all my heart? Can, who can do this? I don't love him with all my heart because Sister Pete got some of it. My children got some of it. Dunamis got some of it. So is, is, can you do this? Love God with all your heart. Oh, yes, amen. I do. You lying. Ain't nobody in here ever loved God with all your heart. You want to. 
Oh, no, I don't know. Some of y'all looking like, you don't know. Hey, yeah, you going to tell me I love God. I love God. You don't love God? What's up with you? I know some of y'all. But I'm getting ready to bust your bubble right here. Look what it says. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Do you love God with all your mind? All your emotions? You don't ever have no emotions? Issues? You, you love God with all your mind? I don't love him with all my mind. I want to. Because some of my mind, you know, uh, is on the game. What the Dallas Cowboys doing? I, I'm just going to be real. I don't love God with all my mind. I want to. He said that because he knew they couldn't do it. He was bringing them to the end of yourself. He brought the law so you can come to the end of yourself. So you'll need a savior. Nobody can keep God without love God with all their heart and all their mind. You want to. Look what it says here. All your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Now, you know that's a lie. You don't love God with all your strength, all your might. You, 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 you don't bring all your money to the church. <laughs> Stop lying. You want to. Now, some of you don't even want that. You know, no, no. Skip over that pop pass. No, you don't. Now, he said, this is how you love. But how can it, well, how can we do it? Before the cross, that was the requirements. But after the cross, there's a different dispensation we live in. Mm. Can I give you after the cross? I'm almost finished. We, we can go home with this, but I, I, we, we need some of y'all looking funny, though. <laughs> Glory to God. Romans 5, 5, look at what Romans 5, 5 says. Lord, I miss you, Jesus. God had to do something because he knew we could never do that. So he decided to do something. Romans 5, 5, look what it says. And hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given you. The Holy Ghost brought love in you now. Mm. You can love because he's in you. And the Bible says we love God because he first loved us. Under the new covenant, he loved us first. Under the new covenant, he's not going to make you love him. No, he wants you to love him with your own free will. I guarantee you, anybody who dies and go to heaven and spend it with God, wants to be there. You ain't gonna find anybody in heaven talking about, man, I wish I'd have went the other way. Mm -mm. Cause God is a free moral agent. He's not gonna make you serve him. He's not gonna make you love him. He's not gonna make you, make you. That's old covenant. New covenant, I put love in you. And now, you can't love me with all your heart and all your soul, so I gave you a new commandment. I know you couldn't keep that one, so I gave you another one. It's in John 13. I'm preaching up in here. Look at John 13. I'm almost finished, but we found here lying, talking about you love. That's why I can't get, can't nobody listen to you, talking about Jesus, because they know you're lying. Talking about you love God with all your mind, all your strength, and got that mad dog in, in, the, in the corner. But look what Jesus said. <laughs> no, but look what Jesus said. Jesus, he helped them, right? He was, see, sometimes he was, he was talking to the Jews, but then sometimes he introduced grace for the next dimension under the new covenant. And here's what Jesus said. He said, a new commandment I give you now. I know, I know, what, I know, what, you're, the, the, I know what they taught you. I know what the law is saying, love all your heart, all your mind, but I gave you a new one. Here's the new one. Here, here it is. Uh, John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall men know that you are my disciples, if you have loved one for another. He eased it up some because, see, we could never love him with all his heart. He said, just find out, find out how I love people and you go love somebody. Love one another as I. Mm. Wow. I hope you receive that. Wow, remember, the word of God is so powerful. 
is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word can remove any burden and destroy in any yoke. So we make sure you apply the word and act on that word today. Before I go, I want to invite you and, and um, those that's watching. Um, I've been in ministry now for 23 years. I'm coming up on my anniversary in August. 23 years. I started with eight people in my home and we went to the hotel and God has brought us here today. 23 years later, God is still faithful. What I want to do is invite you out <coughs> to our celebrations. We have a celebration coming up August the 12th. August the 12th is our black tie affair. It's a gala that we're having and we want to invite each of you. I know I pastor a church, but I also am called to the body. And some of you who love us and love our ministry, we want to invite you out to celebrate with us at the Marriott on August the 12th at 7 p.m., $65, um, a ticket for your, for your food and fun and fellowship and celebration. Make sure you call the office at 757-82-POWER. 757-82-POWER and get your ticket so you can come and celebrate us. And not only that, even that Sunday, August the 14th, following that Friday, we're having our anniversary celebration that morning at 10 o'clock with Pastor Judith Shaw from California will be here to minister the word. Listen, mark your calendars, call in. We would love to see you. I would love for you to come up to me and let me know that you are coming from the television audience. We love you. Keep, keep watching and um, make sure you come and let's celebrate 23 years of dunamis. Before I go, I want to um, share with someone who may not know the Lord. Listen, all you have to do is receive Jesus um, in your heart. If you confess with your mouth um, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. So go ahead and repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, Son of the living God. I believe you died for me and rose up on the third day. I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. Come into my heart, do something with my life. Amen. If you, if you said that, Welcome to the family of God. Let us know so we can give you some information to help you in your Christian walk. We love you until we see you next week. God bless you. And remember, power, the power of God is able to change and rearrange things in your life for the good. God bless you. And we'll see you soon.